Okay. Oh, Assalamualaikum and good afternoon. Boleh dengar tak? All right, um, so for this week, we are going to continue with the next topic. Uh, last week, I've, I've shared topic number two, eh, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so for this week, this is a continuation from it, uh, which is about project analysis and evaluation. Okay, so there will be some elements that we've uh, learned from the video uh, from the video before. Okay, with regards to um, uh, decision making, eh? when we 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 are we are making capital investment, so we have to make some big decision because when we talk about capital investment, obviously. It involve uh, a lot of money okay, because the value of capital investment usually is a huge amount of money. So here for topic number three, this is like I said, a continuation or a, an advancement from the previous one, whereby we try to make a ro more robust analysis in order to make our decision more meaningful or more accurate in terms of, you know, making the right choice. So, uh, let me share with you a slide. Okay. Um, we go straight to the content. So basically, there are a few, uh, few things you will uh, go through afterwards in terms of how to forecast the risk. And there are a few types of analysis that we will do in terms of to test, like I said, the robustness. Okay, okay just one second. Uh, okay, to test the robustness. Okay, the robustness of our our analysis to make our analysis, like I said, more accurate. Okay, so we have scenario and also sensitivity analysis. And on top of that, we're going to do some break-even analysis as well. Okay, you will see afterward there are three types of uh, break-even analysis. Uh, we have financial analysis, we have uh, financial break-even, sorry, financial break-even, we have operational break-even, and so cash break-even. Okay, operational. Uh, cash break-even, and also financial break-even. Okay, so there are a few types of analysis we, need, we will do afterwards. Then we're going to go through uh, the operating leverage as well. Right, and lastly, what is capital rationing? So most of the analysis here is basically relating to forecast. Okay, we are doing similar like capit uh, making capital investment decision before. This is something that yet to happen. So before we invest on certain thing, we try to do some analysis in order to make our decision, like I said, lah, to be more precise. Okay, so this is just to ensure that we are not making wrong decisions. Okay, especially when we talk about capital investment. Okay, capital investment. So what kind of capital investment? Again, if you watch the previous video, you can see lah, a lot of investment related to, uh, for example, uh, purchasing new machines. Okay, purchasing new machines or new assets. Uh, and usually when we talk about capital investment, one of the key criteria when we do our analysis, we're going to assume that there will be cash flows. Okay, there will be cash flows involved. Usually, the cash flows here referring to besides money going out, we are talking about potentially money going in from that capital investment. All right. But anyway, 
And previously, we've discussed the concept of, if you remember from the previous video, we have the types of analysis. The most commonly used would be the net present value. Okay, NPV, net present value, or uh, IRR, internal rate of return. Okay, so these are the two common uh, capital budgeting technique that we use. And these two types of analysis rely heavily on what we call as discounted cash flow. Okay, again, remember this cash flow is expected or uh, forecasted figure. Okay. And when we talk about discounted, this is basically involved concept of time value of money. Time value of money, meaning we are going to uh, forecast a figure in the future from the forecasted or the expected values. And we're going to bring that value into this money, into this value terms. Okay, so the process is called discounting. So that's why I follow them process of discounted cash flows, right? However, there are sometimes uh, our estimations, because remember, eh, this is expected or forecasted figures. Sometimes we might have problems of overestimating at the point, underestimate our values, okay? So that's why uh, we need to do some further testing, at the point, further analysis in order to make our decision better. So that's why uh, the basic problems here is just simply to, uh, to understand whether by having a positive NPV is just enough, okay? The, the, the correct answer is actually not, not enough. So that's why in order to make our analysis is more reliable, okay? Instead of looking at NPV as positive, just positive, we need to take a closer look. So meaning we have to look further. Okay, we have to look further and do a bit more uh, types of analysis, right? Even though the analysis will be actually the same, we're still gonna use NPV and IRR, but uh, there are some uh, variables that we're gonna, uh, we're gonna exchange and also we're gonna test separately. Okay, so I'm not gonna talk about this anymore. So the, the thing that we're gonna do in terms of the forecasting is to ensure that the sensitivity issues can be uh, taken into consideration. So what does it mean? As I mentioned earlier, when we do estimate, sometimes it can be under estimates or overestimate. So what does it mean by underestimates? We are uh, predicting our values to be lower than the actual uh, circumstances. Or for over, obviously, it's device versa, meaning we overly estimate or we overconfidence with the uh, scenarios, and therefore we put the figure is slightly higher than the expected or the supposed values. So therefore, if we have, you know, over or underestimate, it will make our decision to be wrong because of this, because of this under or overvaluation. Because we change the figures, obviously our calculations of MPV will be different. Okay, so therefore, uh, to get a better decision, one of the things that we're going to do is by having one of, uh, of the analysis I mentioned earlier is the sensitivity analysis because we want to see how sensitive the changes of one or, or more variables affecting to our uh, uh, forecasting or uh, our, our results of our analysis. Okay, so this would be our first types of analysis based on scenario analysis. Okay, scenario or sometimes it's also known as what if analysis. What if I put a question mark. So what happened to our MPV if we put a different cash flows. Remember just now, uh, from the previous video, we just assume based on one scenario, okay, we, we, we take the figures based on our estimations and we calculate the MPVs. Remember, uh, by the way, when we talk about MPVs for, for this paper, 
you might have to use uh, financial calculators, right? Financial calculators. And the figures that we, that we use is just based on one assumptions. Okay, but when we talk about scenario analysis, we have to make a multiple scenarios or multiple situations. Right, so therefore, instead of just have one types of analysis, we extend, okay, extend the analysis based on two other scenarios. Okay, two other scenarios is based on best case basis, best case, and worst case scenarios. So the actual or the original estimation is based on what we call as base case scenario. Okay, again, if you look at the video from topic number two, we just use one, which is actually the base case scenario, the initial set of projections. However, for scenario analysis, like I said, we extend. Okay, and how we extend, like I said, we have best and worst. Okay, for best case scenario, eh, for best case scenario, we're going to assume, right, we're going to assume that our project, okay, will generate the highest revenues, okay, and at the same time, it will incur the lowest cost. Okay, this is the rule there, eh? high revenues with the lowest cost possible from the projection. So meaning, uh, when we estimate on original, on the initial set of projection, base case scenario, we're going to take the higher end of revenues, meaning they will earn more Okay, earn more than the actual projections. And at the same time, it will incur lowest cost, meaning the cost will be lower as compared to the base case scenarios. So that's why I put a sign here. So P is the price, okay, uh, the price of uh, the, the product, I say, meaning we're going to sell the product at higher price, okay, and we're going to sell more in terms of Q, Q is quantity. Okay, P price, selling price, Q is the quantity. So meaning we're going to sell at a higher price at the same time at a higher quantity, meaning we're going to sell more, right? And at the, at the same time, the cost will be lower, right? V is variable cost. Okay, I put it here, lah. variable cost. Variable cost, P in the price eh? or selling price. Uh, Q quantity. Uh, and FC is the fixed cost. Okay, so meaning both costs. Uh, cost, yeah. Okay, both costs will be at the lowest points as compared to the base case scenario or the initial figures that we have. So by having both combination, meaning we are selling uh, selling more, and at the same time, our cost will be lower. So we're gonna, the, the, the gap between the two, though, between price, selling price, and then the cost too will give us higher profit margin, basically. Okay, common sense, eh? We sell at higher price with a higher volume, and our cost will be lower. So obviously our profit margin will be more. So therefore, when we calculate, for example, uh, operating cash flows, or we, when we calculate the uh, net profits, for example, or even the NPV, net, uh, net present value, the value will be higher. Okay, that's why kita panggil the best case scenario lah, right? And vice versa for worst case scenario, it will be lowest revenues, meaning our price and quantity will be at the lowest, even lower from the base case scenario and it will incur higher costs, okay? So meaning we're gonna assume that our supplier will charge us, uh, you know, higher price because of, I don't know, whatever reason of due to the market, for example, okay? Shortage of supply in the market and cost the, uh, the price of our products variable and so fixed cost will increase, for example, okay? So low revenues, and high cost and again combination of these two will make our profit margin to be smaller right and that's why it's called worst case scenario okay so by having 
the normal one, I can say like the base case is the normal estimations. Best case ni, if we are optimistic, okay, best case ni sometimes kita boleh panggil dia optimistic. We optimist that the market is go with us, meaning we can sell more and the cost will be lower, for example, then kita optimistic with the predictions. And for worst case scenario, we are going to be pessimistic. Pessimist. Okay, pessimist. So, or pessimist, again, the, the other end of our estimation would be at the lowest point. Our, our revenue and our profit will be at the lowest point. Okay, by having these three, okay, it will broaden the horizon in terms of our analysis. So, meaning, uh, when we look at the figures, then we can be, okay, extra cautious. Okay, meaning, okay, if our estimation is correct, then this is our profit. But what if, okay, what if the market not, you know, does not go with our estimation? So what would be the worst case scenario? Then we can see, okay, from this investment, worst case scenario, our profit will be at this point, for example. So like I said, this will be uh, a better decision, uh, decision making tool before you decided to go with the project or whatnot. Okay. So, for example, there's a a project, eh, project that costs a two hundred thousand ringgit, and it has five year life cycle. Okay, when you see these two initial costs with the project life, automatically you actually can calculate what we call as annual depreciation. Okay, you can calculate annual depreciation. Okay. And usually for this case, even though from the previous video, we have at least two types of uh, depreciation method that we can use, either straight line or topon makers. But for this, we most of the time, we're going to assume that the calculation is based on a straight line method. So meaning from the initial cost, we're going to depreciate it uh, evenly or equally every year. So to get the annual depreciation, simply take the initial cost. Divide by uh, the life cycle, lah. life cycle of the project. So meaning in this case, the cost is two hundred thousand, and the life cycle is five years, so forty thousand. Forty thousand, Okay, forty thousand. So this is our initial depreciation, which is forty thousand. At that in short, usually we just use D. Okay, and there's no salvage value. Okay, there's no salvage value, so we're gonna assume it's zero. And the required rate of return is 12. So this is your key. Required rate of return is 12%, and the tax rate is 34%. So this is your T. Right? So we have three information here. We have the depreciation, 40,000 uh, N. So this is your N, uh, five years. Sorry, for meaning for information. Lah. Okay, cost. Okay, cost pun boleh masuk. 200,000. Depreciation, 40,000. And five years. Uh, the key is 12%, the rate of return. And the tax rate is 34% T. And on top of that, there's some more information. Right. Just, I put star at sini eh. The lower and upper band ni, ataupun bound ni, sometimes given, sometimes they might not give you directly. So in this case, they give you lah, the table. Sometimes you have to calculate on your own because the base figures will be given, obviously. Okay, uh, as, as before, the base will be given in the question. Okay, however, the lower and upper bound uh, depends on the on the questions. For example, they might give you in this, in this table format or else they give you assumptions that you have to calculate on your own. But anyway, these are the things that you need to find. Okay, the unit sales. So this is your Q, the quantity. Right. Remember the 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 upper, the arrows that I showed you the based on the test and uh, worst case scenario. Um, the price, the quantity, and two costs, the fixed and the variable costs. Okay. So this is your Q. So this is your price P. 
this is your V, V, C, and also F, C. This, these are the four things that they, the person gave you. Okay, so the base, base case scenario, so the company will sell 6,000 units, okay? And for every unit, they will sell it at 80 ringgit. Okay, so this would be ringgit, I eh? ringgit. All three, this is all in ringgit, Malaysia. Okay, so the variable cost per unit is 60 ringgit. This one, fixed cost sometimes not per unit, but not fixed cost. It's just fixed cost regardless kada -kada of the units. But anyway, the fixed cost is 50,000 ringgit. Okay, 50,000 ringgit. Right. And the question gives you the lower and upper bound. Okay, and when we talk about lower and upper, this is not the best or worst case scenario. Eh? This is not best or worst. Okay, no. Best and worst is actually based on our assumption. Remember tadi? Kalau best, price and quantity to be high, and B and FC to be low. So meaning, when we want to estimate based on best case scenario, contohnya, when we want to calculate, we're going to use uh, QMP for these two using these two figures, QMP, yeah, price and quantity to be at the upper bound, meaning higher than the base, the, uh, from the base. Whereas when we calculate the variable and fixed cost, we're going to use these two. Okay, lower bound, which is 58 ringgit, lower than the base. And the fixed cost will be lower as well, 45,000. Okay, combination of these two. Okay, so don't look at upper and lower, Thinking that, okay, upper will be best, lower is worse, no. Eh? This is <clears throat> the estimation. So we have to use the, uh, the assumption I mentioned in the previous slide. So we look to calculate the best case scenario. We're going to use price and quantity for upper bound. Uh, both costs will be lower bound. And again, vice versa lah for worst case scenario. For worst case scenario. See, I'm going yellow. So we're going to assume that the Q and P ni will be lower bound. It looks like a bar, right? Green. Okay. Lower bound. This is for worse, eh? worse, worst case scenario. And we're going to assume that the cost will be like, more expensive. So we're going to use uh, VC and FC at higher, higher bounds. And the combination of these two will give you Worst case scenario. Okay, so we're going to take this information, okay, together with the previous one, this information of uh, depreciation, the N, the K, and the tax rates in uh, calculating the MPV. Okay, again, this is from the previous video, how to calculate MPV based on the OCF, operating cash flows. So this is the estimation. Uh, kita ignore dulu yang bawah tu. Kita tengok the base case dulu. So based on base case scenario, initial set of projections, all of this information is based on this. Okay, based on ni je. This column je. Okay. Q6000, P80 ringgit, BC860 ringgit, and the fixed cost is 50,000. So this is the formula that by now you, uh, you, you should be aware of. We, we used this in the previous video as well. So price minus uh, variable cost okay, times Q. So this is basically to find your gross profit. Okay, gross profit, eh? price uh, minus variable cost, you get gross profit minus the fixed cost. Okay, minus the fixed cost. To so get the net profit, multiply with one minus tax. Okay, this is the profit after tax. Okay, ataupun ni tadi minus FC is this is basically sepatutnya uh, operating profit. Eh? Sorry, operating profit. Multiply with one minus tax to give you the net profits, and then we add on with the depreciation after tax. Okay, depreciation after tax. 
So price is from the base, 80 ringgit minus the variable cost of 60. So you have a 20 ringgit margin times 6,000 units. That's your gross profit minus the fixed cost of 50,000. Okay, 50,000, the, um, the fixed cost give you the operating profit times one minus 34% tax rate. Okay, 34% tax rate. And the whole thing here, the front part would be your net profit or earning after tax, after we deduct tax. And we add on the, uh, after tax depreciation to get the operating cash flows. So 200,000 is the uh, initial cost divided by five. As I mentioned before, this would be your annual depreciation of 40,000 ringgit. So you are actually plus with 40,000 ringgit and you multiply with the 34% tax rates. Okay, remember this one, Daddy. After tax, we need to take one minus tax, yeah. So that's why we use this one. But for the tax rate, uh, for the depreciation, we're gonna uh, multiply with the tax rate directly. And <clears throat> the operating cash flows would be fifty nine thousand eight hundred ringgit, and this would be our assumption of their annual cash flows. So meaning from this project based on our selling price and whatnot, the project will give you 59,800 ringgit every year for five years. Okay, remember eh, the assumption, we have five years project cycle. So this 59,800 will be generated equally for five years. Okay, for five years. That's base case scenario. Okay, but the question asks us to generate two alternatives best case and worst case scenarios so for best case scenario again these are the rules that you need to understand for best case p and q at the highest point both costs will be at the lowest point with the same formula we're going to exchange all four variables according to these four rules okay so meaning the price and quantity we take the highest point so p is at 85 ringgit and Q at 6,500 units. And the cost V and FC is 58 and 45,000 respectively, which is a lower bound. Both costs will be at the lower bound. Okay, I need that, yeah? Uh, yeah, this one, that, yeah? Lower bound, the red one, 58 and 45,000. So multiply with one minus 34%. So this is uh, fixed. The tax rate doesn't matter your assumption. It will be the same. And the depreciation also the same, 40,000 times 34%. And here, as you can see, our operating cash flow will be higher at 99,730 ringgit. And this uh, project will give them quite, quite significant amount of increments based on that assumption and similarly if you look at the worst case scenario with these rules the price and quantity at the lower point and the variable and fixed call will be higher and with the same formula and the company will generate this amount of cash flows every year okay so if you want to see from this project, basically the maximum the project can give you is about 99,730. So this would be the max, basically. The company will generate from this uh, project. Okay, so this is the normal. Normal is 59,800. And the minimum, the project will give you around 24,000. 490 ringgit so this will be the range okay the range now by having this info these two information you can see already or give you a better understanding of this project when you potential returns okay potential returns there now we have more information as compared to if we do some basic analysis we just uh base our you know information just on the 59,800 but now, by having this uh, scenario analysis, we have more information and it will give you better understanding of the potential project. So, maximum 99,730, minimum 24,500.
0.490. And the question doesn't ask you to stop here, and this is just your operating cash flows. Okay. The question asks you to find the net present value. So therefore, we have to estimate based on the information that we have. If you have financial calculators, right, you can use <clears throat> uh, the, the information from the cash punya function. I'm not sure what kind of calculators that you have. You can use the cash flows punya uh, function in your calculators and you set your interest rate at um proper interest rate to 12% tadi k eh k is 12% so you set at 12% and you use the editor the cash flow would be uh let's say we calculate based on worst case scenario first ataupun best best case scenario eh best lah dulu okay or maybe we should start with base Okay, the calculate base sorry. So 59,800 will be our returns every year. Okay, and the cost of the project was uh, 200,000. So this is our initial cost. Eh? Initial cost kita is 200,000. So this will be our year one punya information. So you put a negative 200,000 as your cost. And then for the following years, for the next five years, we're going to put uh, 59,800 okay, as our cash flows. Okay, that's it. So we have. And again, in the function, there's a NPV function. You just simply click the EXE at the execute button. Okay, it give you NPV for this one, eh? for base case scenario, the NPV is uh, 15,000, 565.62. Okay, so it's a good sign. It's a positive net present value. So it, it indicates that this project will generate profits to you based on discounted cash flows. So like I said, uh, initially, it will give you a good sign. Lah. Okay, if based on base case scenario, point if you get a negative MPV, so automatically you don't have you don't bother about calculating best or worst case scenario. Lah. This is not a good start in terms of um, uh, predicting or try to get uh, the best analysis. Okay, so meaning usually if our base case scenario, if you get a negative. And PV at this stage, we can straight away reject the project, meaning we don't proceed with a, uh, uh, with the project lah. Meaning we reject the project. <clears throat> okay. Now let's say if we want to calculate the MPV based on best case scenario. So similarly, use the cash flow function with the interest rate of twelve percent. But now we we swap um the cash flows the cost still 200,000 but the cash flows now annually it will be 99,730 okay so based on this the cash flows will be at 159,000 Uh, 504. <clears throat> they are the same as here. So you can round up or you just put it the two decimals. Okay, so you can see the huge difference. Eh? It's more than uh, more than 100%. This is what like 1000% increments. Okay, 10 times full from the initial uh, projections. Okay, and for the worst case scenario, again, you can use the cash flow function. Uh, the annual cash flow would be 
So for this, it will be a negative 111.719. So it's a negative uh, cash flows. Okay, negative cash flows. So this is a summary of MPVs. Okay, worst case scenario, negative 111.719. With the best case scenario, 159,504. So IRR also the same, eh? If you have the financial calculators. Okay, but the question doesn't ask you to find IRR, but you can uh, find the IRR, IRR function, internal rate of return, eh? It is internal rate of return. This is net present value. Okay, so both functions can be done using financial calculators very easily. Okay, so what can we read here based on our results? Okay, obviously when, uh, for MPE, very straightforward. We expect the net present value to be positive. The higher the present value, the MPV, the better. So meaning worst case scenario give you a negative figures, but both base case and best case scenarios, it will give you positive values, which indicates a good sign. And for internal rate of returns, what we're going to do, usually we're going to compare our IRR against the cost, ataupun the expected uh, rates of return. Remember our K, the rate of return is 12%. 12%. So based on these two, again, base case and best case scenarios, is exceeding 12%. Both is higher than 12%. Base case 15.1 for the best case scenario 40.9% or almost 41%. So both give you know higher returns as compared to our cost, uh, which is 12%. However, again, worst case scenario give you a negative return. So therefore, it's a bad sign, lah, basically. Okay, so this is the scenario analysis whereby we can see the worst possible and also the best possible ataupun the minimum and the maximum values that the company can generate based on the projections. Okay, this one I already mentioned before. Lah. Okay, so that's number one. Any questions? Okay, so for best thing or worst, you just remember the rules I mentioned. We have four variables, price, quantity, uh, variable cost, then fixed cost. You need to use the right combination for the best and worst case scenarios. I, I mentioned multiple times already what's the combination for best and worst case scenario. And secondly, um, uh, you, need to, uh, you need to calculate MPV if the question asks you to calculate uh, based on best, ataupun uh, worst, or even base. Usually, the base case scenario you you have to calculate. Okay, especially the net uh, net present value. Okay, but but uh, the best and worst case depending on the question. Lah. Some question might ask you to calculate just the best case scenario. Okay, just to test you. Lah. Okay, so therefore, uh, remember the uh, rules right uh, correctly in terms of the combination. Just ataupun if you want to make sense of it, remember when we talk about best case scenario, the return must be at highest point, the cost will be at the lowest point, and vice versa for worst case scenario. We're gonna sell lower, okay. The price and quantity will be lower, but the cost will be more for us. Okay. Uh, so if you want to make sense how to remember the best thing at uh, worst case scenario. Now once we've done scenario, the next analysis is about sensitivity. Okay, so again, this is another enhancement or to put add on that we, we can use to uh, take a look at um, the how robustness our, our analysis can be. So here again, we're going to use MPV as our method of uh, method of analysis. However, 
we're going to change. Remember, Tani, when we do scenario analysis, we change all four. Okay, from base, we change all four depending on best case and worst case scenario. All the price, quantity, uh, variable cost, fixed cost will be changed according to the scenarios. However, for sensitivity, we just going to change one at every analysis. So meaning from price, quantity, V and FC, we're going to change one, just one. And usually when we talk about sensitivity, usually, usually, lie, not necessarily. And again, you can look at the question. Uh, we're going to change the quantity first. Okay. We're going to change one quantity, uh, not one quantity, meaning the quantity two we will uh, exchange based on, again, the, the lower and upper bound. Though. We're going to change one. And then we're going to see how it changed in terms of the OCF. Obviously, cash flow obviously will change now. When we change one variable, the out output of it will be different. And when, when the OCF change, obviously our MPV will change as well. So that's why we want to see what happened to MPV if we change one variable. And, and in the example, I'm going to use quantity. And this scenario analysis, sorry, this sensitivity analysis is a subset. This is another element of scenario, but uh, a subset category of the uh, scenario analysis. Okay, so the greater the volatility in MPV, and obviously it is more difficult to forecast. Okay, like a volatile, uh, macam you try to predict a very volatile punya market. Obviously, it's more difficult as compared to very you know very stable kind of movement in the market. So this is more predictable. This is more unpredictable and more difficult to forecast. So meaning the greater the volatility, the, the harder for us to forecast and therefore more attention needs to be done in order to estimate. Okay. Again, the same example, the same information that we have. Okay, so the question asks us to illustrate how sensitivity analysis based on uh, changes towards the unit sales, meaning we're going to change the quantity and we want to see how sensitive, you know, uh, our analysis towards the changes of Q to the MPV. Right, so when the question asks us to evaluate the sensitivity based on two information, first, you know, tengok the sensitivity of MPV. So meaning we're going to have uh, two sets of MPV, two sets, eh? two sets of MPV. So we need to calculate two MPVs. And usually we're going to use our base as our starting point. This is our starting point, the original values. And when we change, and the new change, uh, the new information will be our uh, new information, ataupun our, our new forecasted information. So there are two sets, the forecasted one and the original one. And together we have the unit sales, the Q. So Q ni also akan ada two sets of information. Okay, so for Q, yang ni lah. So we're going to use base. And I prefer to use upper usually. So this is our Q. So this would be our original Q, Q0. And this would be our new Q. <clears throat> okay, so for OCF, remember formula day tadi, it's price minus variable cost times Q minus fixed cost. This would be your operating cost times 1 minus tax and minus with uh, depreciation times tax okay okay minus plus 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 uh, times tax so when we do the sensitivity analysis again eh, remember kalau scenario just now we change all four kalau best case scenario p kita ambil upper v kita ambil uh, lower q we take upper fc we take lower okay but for this analysis all information will be based on base case scenario all information okay 
except for the the thing that we want to measure, which is the Q, the unit sales. So we just gonna change Q here. So meaning, eh? okay, bear with me. The original is this one. So this one memang kita dah calculate tadi. The OCF, we get 59,800. Okay, so this is our OCF original, OCF zero. Now we want to find the new OCF because not cari NPV, we need to calculate OCF first. Okay, so to, we need to find what will be the forecasted OCF based on sensitivity. So I'm going to put OCF one as our uh, new uh, new uh, estimations. So how to get OCF one? Again, the same information from all of our base case scenarios. So meaning P will be eighty ringgit, V will be sixty ringgit. However, this Q Kita akan tukar. We have to change this. And as I said, I'm going to use the upper bound. So I'm going to use 6,500 units as my new estimations. Okay, so the rest will remain the same. So that's why in sensitivity analysis, we're going to change just one, one variable. And we're going to see what happened if we change Q in this case. Okay, so this is the original OCF. We've done this before. 59800 and for the expected ataupun the uh, alternative OCF all variables will remain the same except for our Q okay our Q I will use the upper bound values of quantity unit sales and notice every everything else remain constant no changes whatsoever and based on this okay based on these calculations our OCF is 66,400 ringgit. Okay, so every year for five years, this company will generate 66,400 ringgit based on estimations of quantity at 6,500 units. And by this 66,400 ringgit, our MPV, our new MPV will be at 39,357 ringgit. Okay, a slight increase based on our estimation. Remember just now, if we do best case scenario, we change everything, eh? every single thing we change. For example, the 80 ringgit uh, price will be higher, I think at about 90 ke, 85 ringgit. Uh, 85, for example. So price will be higher, 5 ringgit. Cost, uh, variable cost lower to 55, for example. This one, we memang to take the higher bound. 6,005 and this one at lower bound 45,000 okay and that combination give us about 100 something thousand net present value okay but when we change just one which is a quantity it will give us a slightly increment at 39,357 gig so now we have four information that we need uh, two sets of MPV and also two sets of quantity 6,005 and 6,000 and based on these two information we can track ataupun we can uh, calculate the sensitivity. Okay, sensitivity can be uh, can be calculated. So meaning the formula would be based because the question asks us, eh, the formula there is not fixed. Eh, the, the formula is based on what kind of sensitivity analysis they want us to calculate. So in this case, it's based on NPV and also Q. So our formula would be MPV of new new MPV MPV one is the new one new estimation minus the original MPV okay and we're gonna divide with quantity Q one minus Q zero okay so this is the formula of sensitivity for these selected variables. Okay, let's say, okay, let's say the question asks us to calculate, okay, they kata, evaluate the sensi sensitivity of the base case OCF, possible lah, they cakap, based on OCF to changes in unit sales, contohnya. So, unit sales is Q. So, what happened to our formula for sensitivity? So, if the question asks us to calculate sensitivity of OCF, not MPV, tapi disuruh saya cari OCF to changes in unit sales. So our formula would be OCF1 minus OCF2 
F0 cut by Q1, Q0. Okay, so for sensitivity, there's no one standard uh, standard formula. It all depends on what variables the question want you to test. And in this question, or in this example, the question asks you to test the sensitivity of MPV versus quantity. So therefore, we use these two information lah, as our formula. All right, so uh, read the question carefully and if you understand, uh, translate the information to the formula accordingly. So based on this information, just now I mentioned, right, uh, 39357 minus 1557 uh, divided by 6,005 under 6,000, yep. Sorry. Doctor, sorry for interrupting. Sorry? Uh, nak tanya. Okay. Dengar tak? Dengar, dengar. <laughs> Uh, nak tanya boleh tak eh, nak minta ulang balik macam mana nak kira NPV guna kalkulator Oh which one for all? Uh, Kita ambil example yang base case boleh? Ah uh, Boleh boleh Okay so for base case scenario the OCF ni faham macam apa? Just use this formula then you get the operating cash flow 59800 uh, Okay so 59800 ni kita akan assume will be their cash flows every single year for 5 years So for 5 years in a row they will generate 59,800 ringgit. Okay, so this is the near cash flow. And for every project, obviously, they are the cost, ataupun the initial cost. Initial cost, ataupun sometimes we call them initial outlay. This is the amount of money, the capital investment that you need to make uh, during, must be involved with the project, lah, ataupun on the day you purchase the machines, for example. Okay, so in this question, the initial outlay was 200,000. Okay, this was mentioned way back in the first slide tadi. Eh? So 200,000 is the cost and we're going to assume this company will have 59,800 cash flow for five years based on base case scenario. Again, I'm not sure what kind of calculators you are using. I'm using Casio FC100V. Some of you might have uh, the updated version FC 200 maybe, 200 V. Okay, uh, so therefore I'm going to, I will explain based on what kind of calculators I have on Dila. Eh. So in this calculator, there are the cash function, cash flow function. Okay, cash flow function. And dalam cash flow function ni, you have to set few information. For example, first dekat sini, the letak I percentage. I percentage ni is the rate of return, the K just now. So in this question, the K is 12%. So kat sini, you can set lah the interest rate at 12%. Boleh eh? Yang tu so far boleh? Boleh. Next, you're going to key in the cash flow punya information. So in this calculator, there are the cash flow function editor ni. You tap the EXE function. Dia ada macam table. Okay, you remember kalau dalam capital budgeting, there's a table macam ni. One, two, three, four. Okay, macam ni lah. Ada five years kan. Kita ada one, two, three, four. Satu lagi. Five years. Okay, and zero is now lah. Okay, zero. And kadang-kadang dalam calculator, they start dengan one, two, three, four, five, six. Depending lah. Whichever numbers that you have, dia akan ada... Uh, six rows macam ni. Um, the first row will indicate for you the cost. So you're going to key in negative 200,000 here. Okay. And for the rest of the information, for the rest of five years, but the next one, the five years kat sini kan, you're going to put the 59,800 kat sini. Dalam your calculator so. Because we have five years of cash flows. Okay, this uh, information you have to insert dalam your calculators. So 200,000 is the cost. Don't forget the, the, the minus sign. Eh? Minus sign indicates cash outflow. The positive sign indicates cash inflows. Okay. Okay, just using this function. 
key in all information, meaning you have six information you need to key in. The first one is uh, minus 200,000 is the cost, and then the rest is your inflows, 59,800. So once you have all these six information, you go back to the cash flow your function. Eh? Again, based on my calculator, the other MPV punya function kat bawah tu, and then MPV, they tulis solve. Solve ni. Eh? Tulis kat sini, MPV, solve. Okay, what I need to do, ataupun what you need to do, if you have, again, uh, my type of calculator, at this function, you go, you boleh browse kat sini, you go to this function, and simply calculate, ataupun press the EXE button. The execute button. Okay, then you akan dapat lah the MPV. Uh, eh, 15, oh, I dapat lain sikit, 15054. Betul tak information nak kiki ini? Kiki nak 800. Okay, I need to check one more thing kat sini. Sama ada. Oh, okay. Begin and. Pretty nak yang ada kan? Pretty nak yang ada. Oh, salah satu information. Pretty nak. Okay, betul. 1, 5, 5, 6, 5. Tunggu. 5, 5, 6, 6. Tadi. We are here kan? Ha. So, the MPV is around that, that figure lah. 15... Five six six or five six seven. Okay. Okay, doctor. Dapat. Dapat. Thank you, doctor. Thank you. Doctor. All right. Okay, so tadi kita tak solat sini, kita stop kat here. Yeah, okay, so based on these calculations, we minus the MPVs and the uh, uh, unit sales. We have 47.58 ataupun 47 ringgit and 58 cents. So what does it mean here, 47.58? We can conclude that for every one ringgit ataupun one unit, uh, increased okay for every one unit increase in terms of the sales the mpv will increase by 47 ringgit 58 cents okay for every one unit increase in quantity ataupun from the unit sales our net present value will increase by 47 ringgit and 58 cents so this is our conclusion from this sensitivity analysis. So therefore, kalau kita nak estimate, okay, let's try 10 unit increase, berapa kita punya MPV, then kita boleh calculate lah. So just multiply, meaning for every 10 units, we're going to get 470 ringgit increment in terms of our net present value. So therefore, it's easier for us to estimate in terms of the sensitivity analysis. Okay, similarly, kalau you reduce by one unit, they are going to reduce by 47, uh, 47 ringgit, 58 cents. Okay, so this would be the summary. You can try on your own how to get these figures. I just showed you based on comparison, based on base dengan best, kan? Even kalau you, you calculate based on base dengan worst case scenario pun, when you do the sensitivity analysis, you should get the same 47.58 figures. Okay. And this is just uh, estimation, estimation for MPV and also internal rate of return based on when we change one uh, variable, which is the Q, the quantity of ataupun the unit sales from 6,000 base. Tadi kita change to 6,005. 
Okay, if you again, if you want to try, you can try based on 5005 and then try to recalculate based on the NPV. The NPV. Okay, but the formula is still the same now. Eh? If you use uh, uh, worst case scenario, your MPV one minus MPV zero, again. Eh? so it's this one K and E minus this one, and the quantity will be negative as well. Okay, so negative divided by negative is positive. Okay, so you will at the point you should get the same figure Q one minus Q zero. Okay, let's take uh, uh, 10 minutes break. Lah. Okay, 10 minutes break uh, before we move on <coughs> to, the, <coughs> to the next part of the analysis. Okay, so let's take 10 minutes.
Okay, let's continue with next types of analysis. Yeah. Okay, so again, this is another, I can say a subset you got, uh, from uh, scenario analysis. But we are looking at the elasticity of the price. Just now, when we do the sensitivity, we look at the quantity. Again, the boleh types of analysis you can change any variables. Okay, tapi for uh, degree of elasticity of price. Okay, we are talking about degree. That's me. So we're gonna measure the changes. Okay, the changes, and we gonna. Uh, and satu lagi, we're gonna we're gonna look at the percentage. If we do the sensitivity just now, we see uh the changes in ringgit pounds. Okay, change in one unit, how much it changed to the MPV or even to the OCF, for example, right? But for degree of elasticity, once we want to see the changes in terms of the percentage, okay, in terms of the percentage again similar like sensitivity. Um. Yeah. Yeah, I record again. Excuse, I cannot pause just now. Nobody pause, so I took me. Eh? But anyway, next time I pause lah. Uh, we're gonna freeze every information that we have, but we're gonna change again one information only, and and this the last um degree elasticity of price since the name is price. <clears throat> so we're gonna change. Just the price. Okay, we just change the price here. We're gonna swap the price to the either lower or upper bound, and the rest of the uh, variables will remain the same. Okay, we remain the same. So again, the same information. So our original OCF is fifty nine eight hundred, and our uh, MPV fifteen five six seven. We we stick to this information, fifteen five six seven. Okay, and to find the original, sorry, the, the, the new expected OCF, again, as you notice, the variable cost, and this time around, the quantity and also the fixed cost remain the same. Okay, these three information remain constant. The only thing that we change is the price from 80 ringgit, and we estimate, again, you can use higher or lower bound up to you, Consistently, actually, you make sure you have to make it consistent. And in my case, I use high bound, ataupun upper bound. So the price increased from eighty to eighty five, and here you can see the OCF increased from fifty eight eight hundred to seventy nine six hundred. Okay, so this is our new OCF, and again using the the same method I showed you just now using calculators, how to find the MPV. So in this case, the cost still remain at negative 200 ataupun minus 200, the initial cost. But our property cash flow is 79,600 ringgit every year. Okay, so here we get the net present value of 86,940 ringgit. Okay, and since this is uh, elasticity of price, Okay, and is the degree. So, kalau tadi we do sensitivity, we just take, for example, MPV one minus MPV zero, and this is based on sensitivity. But when we do degree of elasticity, uh, we're gonna extend the uh, the, the calculation, and we're gonna divide by the original net present value. The original net present value. Um, this is what we call as changes. We want to find the percentage of changes. Okay, the formula is basically based on percentage of changes. So, kalau kita nak cari the price, so meaning is price one minus price zero divided by the original price. So we we're gonna see the percentage of changes towards the price. Okay, so this is the formula. Lah. MPV1 minus MPV0 divided by the original MPV and we divide with uh, price 1 minus uh, price 0 divided by 
by zero. So this is in percentage, basically. This is actually based on percentage as well. So there are two ways how to read it, either by times or by percentage. Okay, so the MPV one, based on our new estimation, this one, 869.0.19 minus with 15.567, the original base MPV, divided by 15.567 as well. And we divide everything by 85 minus 80. This is the price, yeah. Divide by the original 80 ringgit. So here, the degree of price elasticity is 73.36 times or 73.36%. And how to read this? You can see that for every price, price increase by 1%, the MPV, so our measurement is price and MPV again. So our uh, conclusion would be every price changes by 1%, the MPV will increase by 73.36%. Okay, our earlier sensitivity for every one unit, okay, one unit of uh, unit sales, they increase by 46 ringgit. Okay, that's in ringgit. Here is by percentage. Okay, 1% increase, NPV will increase by 73.36%. Okay, and that's how we conclude the degree of price elasticity. So it's quite huge, yeah? By percent, change by 1%, sorry. The MPV will increase more than 50%. It's almost three quarter percent. Three quarter than 100 percent. That's it. Right, so that's our third analysis. Kita the scenario analysis. Uh, we have uh we have sensitivity analysis and we have uh degree of price elasticity. Okay. That's one part. We measures all the, and basically the three that I've mentioned just now all come from the same family analysis, which is scenario what if analysis. So we try to uh, tweak, uh, we change one information here and there. Like unlike the first one uh, for our scenario, we change everything again yeah, based on testing our worst case. But for sensitivity or price or uh, elasticity. We change just one variable. Okay, now we want to see the break even analysis. So, for break even analysis, we want to see, we want to find out what will be the amount of units, the sales volume that will give us break even. You know, break even, again. Uh, the amount of volumes that we need to achieve in order to get back our cost, the amount of money we paid out. Right, but here we have three different uh, measurements. Kita ada accounting, but even. Kita ada cash, but even. And we have financial, but even. And three different uh, measurements with the three different uh, definition of break even. Okay, so for the first one, accounting, but even. This is where our Q, this is. By the way, when we talk about break even, our 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 end game, our 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 target is to find the quantity, the sales volume, at what quantity that we can get back our returns, at least break even. So here, I got accounting break even is when the sales volume uh, will give you operating cash flow, our OCF, to be equals to our depreciation. Okay, depreciation means depreciation and bukan depreciation after tax, eh? depreciation, depreciation. Pre-tax depreciation basically, right? Without taking into account the depreciation, uh, the tax values. So we want to find the OCF equivalent to depreciation. So okay, to go back to here, basically we want to find our OCF assumption Q. Here we put Q 6,000 again. But here you want to find what is the amount of Q in order to get our OCF me to be 200,000. Our depreciation, we can 200,000, sorry. 200,000 divided by 5 is 40,000. Okay, so we want to find at 40,000 uh, ringgit depreciation, what will be our OCF? 
ataupun sorry at 40000 OCF what will be our q q ni yang question mark so meaning we going to substitute all information with the same information maknanya based on base ni eh so our p our v our fc and our ocf uh, the whole the whole uh, apa formula of ocf ni will generate us 40000 ataupun i i i i tulis kat sini kan sini lah eh kita tulis kat sini untuk ingat okey i put it here lah this is for break even katakan accounting break even eh for accounting break even our ocf will be equal to depreciation so meaning it will involve calculations of the price of 80 ringgit minus variable cost of 60 we don't know the q because q is our uh, target to find the fixed cost would be 50,000. Okay. And 1 minus 0.34 plus uh, 40,000. Uh, 0.34. And all of these will equate to 40,000. Okay. So in order to find Q, obviously we need to, to have all other information. Again. So the only unknown variable is Q. So this is the thing ataupun the formula that you need to use in order to find your Q. And this is based on base case scenario lah. So soalan tengok lah kalau kat soalan kata okay, based on worst case scenario calculate the Q lah. Then you have to change a lot of variables lah. But here I'm assuming we use the base case scenario. Okay. Then we find Q, what is your Q here. And by having the Q, you know that's the amount of target you need to sell in order to generate enough uh, operating cash flows to cover the depreciation value. So that's accounting break even. Okay, so we want to find the Q at which OCF equals to depreciation. For cash break even, so this is the first one. For cash break even, we want again to find the sales value, the Q at which the OCF equals to zero. Okay, exactly zero. So the same formula, bear with me. Okay, the same formula for cash break even. Eh? For cash break even, everything will be the same except this one equals to zero. This one, you not cari. OCF equals to zero. The OCF equals to zero. Okay, so obviously when we use cash rate even, your, your Q will be much lower. Okay, your sales volume will be lower than accounting rate even. Meaning you need to sell less in order to get zero. Instead of to achieve 40,000, you need to sell less volume okay and the third one would be financial break even so financial break even similarly uh, you want to find the volume the quantity but this time around instead of ocf we're going to use net present value and this net present value is equals to zero okay okay can you notice for accounting break even and cash break even we use ocf but for financial break even, we're going to use net present value equals to zero. So therefore, we need to find uh, the OCF based on net present value. So here, the OCF is given. OCF ni equals to the precision value. Here, the OCF is zero. But for financial break even, you don't know the OCF yet. You need to find the OCF if the net present value is equal to zero. Uh, so we need to do a reverse, but there are two calculations involved. Lah. First, find the OCF based on MPV equals to zero. Then we substitute uh, the new OCF based on our calculation in the OCF formula to find the Q. So there are two steps involved for this. Unlike the first and second, which is quite straightforward. We just use the representation and zero. Okay, but for financial even, we need to find the MPV first. But anyway. Right, so untuk question ni, there's a different different example. Uh, again, 
the project requires initial investment of 5,000 ringgit. So this is our initial cost. Using straight line method, you depreciate to zero over five years. So similarly, our depreciation would be 5,000 divided by five years. So our depreciation per year is 1,000 ringgit. The discount rate or the rate of return, K, is 12%. And your tax rate is 35%. Tax ataupun T. And these are additional information. Sama macam tadi lah. Dia punya lower bound and upper bound. But different price uh, unit sales. VC and also FC. Okay. Now. For accounting break even. Remember for accounting break even. We want to find the Q. At which OCF equals depreciation. So depreciation kita 1000. So this is basically 1000. Okay. So price is 50 ringgit. Again, remember we are using base. We are using base first. Kalau dia tak suruh guna best or worst case, we're going to use base case. So you need sales Q is 2000. Price is 15 ringgit. We see 10 ringgit and the fixed cost is 4000. Okay, so you slot in all the information accordingly. Just like our uh, first example, the position is 1000 times 35 equals to uh, the OCF of 1000 ringgit. Okay, 1000 ringgit is the OCF punya values. The unknown amount is Q. So we substitute all the information, solve the equation accordingly, and we get the Q at 1000 units. So what does it mean? In order to achieve accounting break even, this company needs to sell 1,000 units of the product. Okay, in order, ataupun in order, yeah, in order to achieve accounting break even. Okay, so this is based on accounting break even. And for the next one, cash break even, we're going to use the same information. All of this will be the same except, uh, yeah, Q is still unknown. All will remain the same except our OCF value, kalau tadi, 1,000 ringgit. For cash break even, ingat eh, cash break even. The OCF equals to zero. So meaning, what will be the amount of quantity required in order to achieve zero OCF? Is zero OCF. So again, same thing, everything, sama je. Okay, except for the Q. Eh, sorry, except for the Q. Except for the zero, in order to find the Q. And when you uh, put all the information in the equation, right, and solve the equation accordingly, and you notice that the amount of units required as I said, will be lower because you don't have to sell more in order to get, you know, as high as accounting break even. So for cash break even, the company needs to sell 693 units only. Okay, which is much lower as compared to the accounting break even. So kalau nak achieve accounting break even, they need to sell 1,000 units. But to achieve cash break even, they just need to sell 693 units only. So it depends on the company lah, whether to use accounting break even or cash break even. Depends on the company's policy. Right. And the third one is to have financial break even. And remember for financial break even, is where the quantity will give or will yeah, we will achieve you the MPV equals to zero. Okay, value of Q at which the MPV equals to zero. And I mentioned earlier, to find financial break even, there are going to be two steps. First, to find the OCF. This is basically OCF, the payments. And again, if you have calculators, it's much easier if you use calculators. But for this, we don't use cash flows. We can use uh, the compound, compound punya, compound, yeah. Compound, 
n is 5 by oh yeah you believe in the compound uh we're gonna calculate for compound or if you have uh tables for example if you want to use tables you can use tables as well okay let me show you but anyway when we talk about mpv equals to zero mpv they show yeah the point the equation is the present value of cash flows and you minus the io the outlay the initial cost and like i said mpv equals to zero eh? so meaning the pv cash flows and also the initial outlay must be the same values okay in order to get zero this present value of cash flows and also the initial outlay will be the same. Okay, must be the same. Okay, remember, in this case, the IO is 5,000 ringgit. The cost of the project is 5,000 ringgit. So therefore, we want to find the present value of cash flow. So this is the pres uh, the formula for present value of cash flow. You've learned this in FM. Kalau you ingat dulu dalam FM, ada time value of money. Okay, time value of money. To find present value of annuity cash flows the formula is pva times uh, amounts ataupun payment ataupun ocf depending on your terms times with pvifa present value interest factor annuity k and n okay so this is a formula okay i assume you that are only because we've learned this before okay so this is the formula of annuity present value annuity so the amount, the payments, or the OCF, okay, times with PVIFA, K and N. So in our case, the rate of return is 12% and the N is 12. Okay, bear with me one second. Yeah. Uh, Let me share the table. Okay. Um, you've seen this kind of table before, I guess. The present value table. Okay. So the, the table that interests us is actually present value, okay, present value, interest factor, annuity, or PBIFA, I just mentioned earlier, and PBIFA. So how to read the table? Again, you, you're supposed to learn this before. Okay, just a recap, right? So remember our K ring at N just now, the K rate of return is 12%, and the N at the penny. And on the side, the period ni, is five years. Okay, so if you look at twelve percent and five years, and the PVIF here, yeah, we're gonna use the PVIF in this one. So the PVIF for five years, sorry, twelve percent is ni, is this value. Nampak lah. Twelve percent five years is three point six zero four eight. Okay, 3.6048. Okay, if you don't have financial calculators, you can use this table. PVIFA, 12% practice, 3.6048. Okay, so the ones in the bracket is basically... You're going to get 5,000 equals to OCF. In the bracket 3.6048. So what would be your OCF? Can be la five thousand. Divided by three point six zero four eight. So you're gonna get one three eight seven point. But this is kita guna decimal kan, so they give you zero four zero four. So more or less the same like this one. Okay, so this one, kalau guna calculator, it give you around this. Okay, more or less the same. So for the illustration, I use this one, one three eight seven zero five. So I'm go I give you alternative how to find the OCF by using the table. 
Okay, so how I get this 3.6048? Okay, recap. I used the table just now. PVIFA is the name of the table. The K, the rate of return is 12%. And the period N is 5 years. So you cross-reference the information. You get this figure, the interest factor figure. So slot in in the, in the formula. Okay, in order to find OCF, simply divide 5,000 with 3.6048. And you get this OCF one three eight seven. So once you have this information, similar like before, like remember A B E accounting break even. So this is for uh the OCF value eh? to find the OCF value for A B E, the OCF equivalent to depreciation amount. Okay, for cash break even, the OCF is equals to zero. Okay, but for financial break even. There's no standard information. You need to find the financial break even, uh, sorry, the OCF based on the, when the NPV equals to zero. So in this example, uh, for financial break even, the OCF is this much, 1387.05. So as you can see, the amount is higher than our depreciation. In our case study, the depreciation was 1000. Right? So for 1,000 ringgit, you need to sell 1,000 units. So here, obviously, you need to sell more than 1,000 units in order to get 1387. So slot in all the information, just like before. Okay, but now the uh, the OCF, uh, the target OCF that you need to achieve is 1387.05. And substitute all the information, find the Q. Here you get the the quantity ataupun the unit that you need to sell is 1,120 units in order to achieve financial break even. Right? So that's the three types of break evens that you have. The accounting break even, the cash break even, or even uh, the financial break even. So read the question when we talk about financial exam ataupun exam or test, whatever exercises whatever uh check what the question wants either accounting cash or financial even so the three will give you different scenarios and what kind of quantity you need to achieve in order to fulfill okay fulfill uh the ocf either equivalent to depreciation equivalent to zero or equivalent to when the mpv equals to zero for financial even Right, and I think this is the, the final calculation. Uh, the operating leverage, ataupun sometimes they call the degree of operating leverage. Ataupun DOL, degree of operating leverage. So operating leverage is the degree to which a firm or a project relies on fixed costs. So we are looking at fixed costs, that's it. So the project with a uh, relatively high, uh, heavy investment in plant and equipment will have a relatively high of DOL. <clears throat> so, I can see if you have higher fixed costs, meaning you are tied up uh, your your investment too with the same amount of investment, ataupun <clears throat> you are you are tied up your apa, your cash flows too with a high uh, high fixed cost lah. So, DOL is also can be mentioned as the relationship between the sales value, ataupun the sales volume, which is the Q. Dengan OCF. Okay. So meaning you want to see the relationship between the two. Okay. Q and OCF. <clears throat> so DOL, degree of operating leverage, measures this relationship. The higher the DOL, the higher the unpredictability. Okay. Remember tadi I, I showed you the, the predictability ni, meaning the fluctuations ni. So meaning the higher the DOL, similar like fluctuations, the more unpredictable it would be in terms of measuring the OCF. So meaning very sensitive. One small change can be high changes in terms of the OCF. So meaning the higher the fixed cost, satu lagi relationship, the higher the fixed cost, the higher the, the DOL. Okay, so the higher the DOL, obviously the higher... The, the more sensitive it will be in terms of forecasting your uh, your OCF. Uh, with a, one small change in terms of your 
variable, one small errors, bila kita change ni bermaksud there will be some errors kan, margin of errors to happen. So, the the higher the changes in terms of your sales volume. Right, so, EOL. Uh, use this focus on this one, I. Ataupun, you can see both you are. So, there are two ways to 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 use, ataupun to find EOL, degree of leverage. It's based on one plus the difference of FC by OCF, fixed cost divided by OCF. Okay, maknanya, if you have fixed cost, you divide with OCF plus one. Then you get the degree of operating leverage. Or you can find the changes. Remember this uh, changes sama macam, macam uh, masa kita buat uh, press, uh, elasticity just now. But instead of MPV, we use OCF. Okay, changes this triangle ni refers to changes. Eh? So meaning OCF 1 minus OCF 0. So this is the changes. So to get the percentage, you divide lah with OCF. So sama lah, Q, Q1 minus Q0. This is the changes, the difference. Right by uh, Q0. Okay, so you can use this formula as well, depending on the information that you have. Okay, consider based on the previous example. The just the just that we use just now. <laughs> Suppose sales are one thousand two hundred units. So this is our Q. Okay, whereby this one thousand two hundred units meets all three break even measures. So meaning, if you go back to here when we talk about when we do estimation, kita set okay in order to fulfill all three. I summarize at sini tadi eh. Accounting break even, company ni kena achieve 1,000 units. For cash break even, even lower, 600 berapa tadi? 693. So the company needs to achieve 693. And for financial break even, the company needs to sell at least 1,120 units. So we have three different sales volume. And based on our uh, assumption just now, the nak achieve ataupun the target the set is 1200 and by having this 1200 units they fulfill all three so meaning if they achieve 1200 units of sales volume all three break events will be achieved basically sebab kalau kita set lower katakanlah we set 1000 sahaja or the two je achieve accounting break even and uh, cash break even will be achieved but for financial break even it's not achieved yet for 1000 so therefore the set higher at 1002 and therefore all three will be achieved okay to justification why they use 1002 what would be the degree of leverage at this 1002 level okay again we use ocf so but the formula is based on ocf and eh? so based on ocf uh, all the information remain the same but q kita kita letak 1002 Okay, based on this assumption. Okay, and don't worry for, for the OL question. Usually the question uh, will provide you what, what figure you, you need to use in order to find the OCF for the OL. Okay, or else you can use any figure sebenarnya. Or else nanti the, the question maker akan, ataupun the, the examiner will have a lot of different answers. Yeah? So therefore, in order to you to use the same values, the question will ask you to use one single information, not one single volume from the question. Okay, so again, insert all information. And here, the OCF is 1650. So this is your OCF based on this information at 1200 units. So using the first, first formula, yang 1 plus uh, uh, FC, FC divided by OCF. Ni, formula ni, 4,000 divided by, ni patutnya letak bracket lah eh. But kalau you tak letak bracket, mathematically you're supposed to solve uh, the, the division first. So 4,000 divided by 1,650, okay, and then add 1, so you get 3.42. Okay, this is your degree of leverage, 3.42. Right, so the UL. So if you want to forecast, 
if you want to forecast what happened to the OCF if your sales increase by a certain percentage, in this case, they give you 20%, 20% percentage. So to find the percentage change in OCF, what you need to do is basically take the BOL, which is 3.42, multiply with the percentage change. So in this case, it's a positive 20%. So 3.42 times 20%, you get about 6.684 or equivalent to 68.4%. So meaning for every 1% change in uh, quantity, the OCF will increase by 68.4%. Okay, so if you want to translate it into figures, we have our original OCF. So original OCF was 1650. So for 1% uh, increment of uh, quantity, the OCF will increase by this much 68.4% kan. So what you need to do is 68.4% changes plus dengan 1650, you get this value, 277.860 cents. Okay, you increase the original OCF by 68.4%. So therefore, the OCF will increase to 2778.860 cents. Okay, so this is this for this one. This would be our uh measurement, measurement for the degree of operating leverage. So again, if the question asks you to estimate what would be the uh, OCF if you need sales increase by 40%, 40%. Right? So what you need to do, take 40% times again 3.42, 0.4, 40%. So it's, it would be 1.368. So it's about 136.8%. Okay. So what you need to do, take 1650. Then 1 plus changes. So 1 plus 1.368. Kalau tadi 1 plus 6.84. So we tambahkan satu lagi times with 1650. So your new OCF would be at 3907.20 cents. Okay, this would be your new OCF if, okay, if the sales increase by 40%, okay, by 40%. Similarly, if the question asks you to predict if the sales decrease, okay, decrease from boleh, eh? So meaning decrease, it would be negative. Or minus, let's say minus 20%. Okay, it will be the same. Okay, the ratio will be the same, cuma 3.42 times with a minus 0.2. So you akan dapat negative 6.84 lah. So kalau negative 6.84, what you need to do, kalau tadi 1 plus changes kan. So here, but the negative, so you will 1 minus 0.684. So it's about uh, 31.6%. 31.6%. Yeah, 31 so you, you can get uh, 1650 minus, uh, minus times, times 0.316%. So it will be 521.40 cents. So this will be the val uh, the, the OCF if they decrease, okay, decrease eh, by 20%. If decrease by 20%, our new OCF will be at 521 ringgit and 40 cents. Okay, so yeah, that's how we measure the changes according to the <coughs> measurement given based on our calculation of BOL. So finally, <clears throat> all of this information, all of this analysis, we, we do it prior to our investment decisions so that we have more information. We can play around with the figures, what happened if, if, what if, what if, and what not. Right? So what uh, the next question would be, okay, 
you now decided to go on go on with the project meaning you decided to proceed with either purchase new machines or to invest in a new project okay you have positive mpv and all your sensitivity analysis indicates uh it's not that sensitive slight changes will still give you positive mpv however you have problems with financing meaning you don't have enough cash at the you don't have enough funds to finance this project so what can you do there are two types of uh what, what we call as capital rationing so ration rationing me basically how to save cash when you have limited resources so there are two types of there are two ways how to get your returns not to get you can get your get your funding <clears throat> either you use soft rationing and to hard rationing so soft rationing usually is more on temporary okay temporary basis so meaning you do uh uh reallocation we call them reallocation you reallocate some of your funding from other resources because your limited resources need upon your lack of resources need is just for temporary basis okay and therefore you have to uh reallocate from other projects for example ataupun cut costs from other projects and that uh savings that you have you reallocate to these coming projects and you 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 foresee that you're going to get positive npv okay take from project a and b from previous projects are the amount of cash you take out from there and then finance these new projects okay, that's soft rationing but if you have a quite permanent uh, shot of funds ataupun you need extra funding therefore you can pin job from outside lah okay you have to borrow from outside ataupun external parties okay so that's for hard rationing so basically this is how you have to uh, allocate your resources according to the uh, the current situation of the company and here they said that PI profitability index is one of the useful tool for you to use if you have soft rationing. But anyway, that's about it for uh, the the topic topic number three. Any question? Okay, so if there's no other question, so this would be our uh, end of topic number three for project analysis and also evaluation. Um, this is week number six. Eh? Okay, so, but our first first topic too is quite quite long because there's a lot of you know uh, sections in that in that topics, but the rest of the syllabus. Kita akan, akan ambil, you know, less times, especially like mostly about maybe one session pun dah cukup. Okay, so again, if there's no other question, as always, I will share this video uh, in my guru. Uh, perhaps one of our coming weeks, maybe kita akan have uh, our physical face-to-face -face session the long overdue sessions uh we'll let you know uh when will it be perhaps next week or yeah, the other following week this is week six one eight seven and then the past two you break in so perhaps you're gonna do once before the midterm break lah okay for our uh topic number four so if there's no other questions thank you very much and we're gonna discuss as well next week but again kita ada delay in terms of our meetings and whatnot we are supposed to have our midterms i thought set lagi so we will discuss this everything in terms of midterms with with regards to assignment even quizzes why tak sempat nak bagi lagi uh in the next meeting okay
So thank you very much. And I'll see you guys soon. Assalamualaikum. Uh, thank you, Doctor. Welcome. Uh, doctor. Yep. Uh, tomorrow class will be online again. Tomorrow ada kelas eh? Uh, petang ada. Tomorrow tak ada kelas lah. Tomorrow tak ada kelas lah. For this week, this is the only session that we have. Okay, sir. Alright, thank you. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you, Doctor. Alright, welcome. Alright. Yeah. Thank you, Doctor. Alright. Thank you, Doctor. Okay. Doctor.